Okay, you guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, for those of you that don't know, this is Miss Heather Roxburg. She is Rockstar Agent, and we are so lucky to have her. So good job for being here. Welcome on Zoom as well. Um, so if you guys don't know, how long have you been in the business? That's one thing I know. 18, 17. I was so close. 17 years. She is one of our millionaire agents. So when you consider agents making a million dollars or more per year, this is one of them. And she sold about 33 million last year. Does that sound right? 33 million in real estate last year, you guys. So we definitely want to hear from her. Um, I've heard a joke. I don't know if it came directly from you, but you make a million bu bucks having parties every year. So that somebody said that once and I'm like, I want to be just like Heather. I just want to party every single month and make a million bucks a year. So this is Heather. So welcome her. We'll give her a little round of applause and get going. All right, I got to stand kind of over here so I can do my PowerPoint. So um, thanks for having me, Terry. Um, so Terry asked me to talk about um, just what I've done to be successful over the last 17 years of my career. And I um, got in right before the recession. So um, I had to navigate through all of that. And I would say that probably the secret sauce to my success has been client parties and just doing very consistent marketing. So Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the marketing plan that or the marketing that we follow um, that we do for our team. Um, and I'm going to go through a PowerPoint. So I'm just going to stand over here in front of this. So um, as everyone. Oh, OK. All right. So we're in a bear market. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that's a market that is declining by at least 20 percent or more. So that's obviously causing a lot of fear amongst our clients and amongst um, agents as well. Um, I, you guys are all feeling the slowdown. And so, um, in order, let me see if I can figure out how to do this here. So for myself and what I've done over the years, um, to just stand out, which is the most important thing that we can do right now for one sharpen our skills. Um, I think it's super important that, um, as agents, you guys are all doing script practicing and dialogue practicing, learning how to overcome client objections. Um, I always like to say it's the skills that pay the bills. So the better you can be at talking to your clients and keeping the fear down with them, um, you know, it's gonna you're gonna end up being able to close more deals by doing that because our clients are just as afraid as I think sometimes we are when we're watching what's happening in the market. And then another thing is just increasing our connections. So it's important that you're working on your database every single day. So you're always looking at different ways that you can add clients to your database. Uh, one of our goals as a team next year is going to be to double our database. So we're putting together a really solid plan for how we're going to do that, you know, through open houses, how we're going to really maximize our client parties to get uh, to meet new people and get new people into the database. So um, if you don't have a plan for that, it's important that you do and just understanding why you need to be working your database because that really is your golden egg right there is the list of relationships that you have. Um, and then providing a, a really amazing first class client experience from the beginning to the closing and then after. So um, having a great plan for that. And if you don't have something in place, I would suggest mapping out the entire client experience and really looking at the different touch points that um, that you need to be making throughout the entire process. And that's before you even go under contract. So it's from the time that you onboard the client um, what are little magical touch points that you can provide throughout the, the, throughout the, from the initial, throughout the under contract until closing, and then the after sales program that you can put together. And then just staying top of mind and really increasing your visibility. Um, that's something that I do really well through the marketing that we do. Um, so just, you know, you got to cut through the clutter, you know, it's, there's so much noise out there. So um, there's so many great ways you can do it if you're if you have a plan in place. Um, so I'm going to start with branding. So um, if you don't have a, I don't know how many people I'm talking to that have teams or that are individual agents, but whether you're a team or you um, you're individual and on your own, it's important that you have a brand for your business. And um, I think it it shows the professionalism of who you are. Um, one of the one of the things that we've done uh, and had over the years is we've had a kind of a brand platform. So all of our branding is very consistent. We have our color platform, we have our um, fonts, we have 
our logo, obviously. Um, so everything looks very consistent across all platforms. So in our newsletters, our social media, and all the marketing that we do, um, our branding is the same. So, you know, my colors are purple and white and like a little dark gray. Um, so I don't just throw on any color of purple. It has to be within the brand, the brand uh, palette. And then if you have had a brand for a long time, you know, you might want to do a refresh. Um, it's, you know, we're at the end of the year this year. And if you've not changed anything for, uh, you know, several years, you might want to look at like updating your brand. This is, we just did ours this past year. And this is our third brand update since I've been in business. Probably, I mean, actually it's probably our fourth, but, um, you know, times change, things change, technology changes. And, and if you haven't done that in a while, it might be a good time to do it. And I think it sends a message to your clients too, as well, that like you're up in your game a little bit. So if you haven't done one, maybe look at doing that and update your profile picture. If you don't do that often too, I try and do that every like, um, or my headshot picture, like every year ish. Um, cause we all change. So it's important that you look like who you are. Um, with the marketing, um, I use marketing pillars. So, um, in the marketing that we put out, we, we want to make sure that we know who our audience is and that we were kind of catering to each different individual um, demographic that we have within our database. So we use all of the marketing pillars to guide our content. So when we're doing social posts and we're writing newsletters, um, even in our, even in the client parties that we do, um, we don't want to just be shoving real estate down people's throats and houses, 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 and stats, 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 because you'll get unfollowed. People don't want to see, they don't want to see that. They want to see a little bit of that, but you also want to make sure that um, you're, you're putting in some community pieces, some lifestyle, you know, always have the market updates and the real estate, because that's what we do, obviously. But, you know, um, it's important that it's not only real estate, so that it's kind of a, you know, you mix it up a little bit. And, if there are different niches that you're really good at or you know topics that you feel like your database or your audience is interested in, you know, make sure that you are um, your marketing reflects that. So you know, I would make it really personal. And that's something that I've always done is we with my my clientele and my database, I mean, it's my list of relationships, so it's important to me that all of our marketing really speaks to them and that's personal. So some of the systems that we have in place, um, so we do um, handwritten notes. So we write notes every single day to our clients for a variety of reasons. When we receive a referral, we, a note immediately goes out to the person that sent us the referral. We'll send out a gift card. Um, when we talk to a client, when, when we're onboarding them, uh, they'll get a note saying, you know, we're excited to work with you. Or if it's a listing, you know, we're excited to help you get your home. Um, sorry, I thought the microphone shut down. So we do a lot of gift giving. Uh, we have... We have a birthday program. So our A plus clients will get a birthday gift delivered to their home. And then if they're not an A plus, they'll get a birthday card mailed to their house. And so we essentially do that for our entire database. And uh, we uh, we do uh, pop buys every month. So everyone on my team gets a gets their monthly pop buys and they stop by and visit their clients. So does everybody know what a pop buy is here? You know, don't know what it is. So it's just like a little gift that you would put together with kind of a little pop up, like a little tag, a call to action. And just you stop by and say hello and check in with your clients and drop off a little gift. So kind of a reason to stop by, but we have a system around that. And Terry has a question. I'll have them anytime. Yeah. Not every month. So we have our database classified ABCs, A plus A's, B's and C's. So we rotate through them, but um, everybody does get touched at least once a quarter throughout the year. So, and the people live far away, we mail them too. So, uh, cause we still get a lot of referrals from clients that might be up in Syracuse or might be down in Salem. We're not going to drive down always necessarily and deliver those. So, um, and then, you know, we do our bands, which I'm going to get into. And then, um, you know, emails is another system. So, one of the recommendations I would make um, is anything that you do once or you do more than once, make a system out of it. So we are very systematic in how we do everything. We track every single gift that we give, um, every pop by we send out. We want to make sure that we're not duplicating and sending people the same thing twice. So um, it's important to do have the tracking in place too. And when you have the systems put together, it just makes it a whole lot easier and it makes it, I mean, it makes it 
your ability to get your items out and get it done, it's going to, you'll, you'll succeed at it versus trying to just do everything on the fly, which is what I think a lot of us do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't have a team, but you have an assistant. Do you have an assistant at all? Um, well, I don't do any of my pop buys. I have a runner. So we will get like interns and college students and high school kids that will go do our deliveries for us. Um, to put all of the things together, it doesn't take that much time and effort if you sit down and you say, okay, who do I need to be connecting with this year? And then how often do I wanna connect with them? And then you plan out your gifts and then you make them. And like we make all of ours in advance and I can help you with that. I can send you, we've got, I mean, we have links to everything. So tags and everything. So if you're interested, I can send that over to you guys to follow up. Yes. Oh, they're really expensive. So our birthday gifts are like $3, 250 to $3 a gift. And we change them every year. So we have a planning meeting at the end of every year. And I mean, we do this stuff very inexpensively. That's the beauty behind it all. Um, you know, last year, like, I think that was an example of our actual birthday gift right there. So that's what we've been doing this year for the gift. So it's popcorn, it's treats. Um, I don't know if there's a little gift card or anything in there, but um, it says like popping by on your birthday. We hope you have a great one. So, I mean, that was like $2.50 to put that whole thing together. And then paying a runner is going to cost you a little bit if you can't, if you don't have capacity to do it yourself. But um, we have like kids that will come in and make these and put the gifts together. So just look at who you know, put a Facebook post out, like who wants to do crafts at night? <laughs> because, you know, if you have friends that have kids in school and they want to earn 10 bucks an hour, that's what we do. One of the agents on my team, her daughter will come in and make gifts. So um, just like think outside of the box a little bit on putting that stuff together. And then just, again, it's creating a plan around it. And if you are really, really busy, maybe just look at who are your ape, who are your top clients? Cause really that's who you want to pour yourself into is your very top clients. The ones that already know how to refer you. And then you continue to mine referrals out of them. So you want to make sure you have touches for them. Um, as far as like the birthday cards and whatnot, I mean, you can print labels. It's really easy to do. Um, you can go on to different, uh, card sites and you can actually just create your, our card says happy birthday month. So when it goes out, it's just happy birthday month. And so we don't, we just send them out at the very beginning of every single month. So it doesn't matter when they arrive and you just sign inside and write a little, hope you have a great one note and get that out. But, you know, maybe, maybe start with like your top people and then build on that as you go. And maybe it's finding a part-time person that, you know, you can hire just to help you do like a client you know, wow, kind of a wow program. So, all right. So we, um, we also, we're always watching social media um, and just anything where we, if we hear that someone's had a baby, um, they have a wedding anniversary. If somebody has a death in the family, any occasion that we see, and we're really, we watch that very closely we'll deliver gifts to them as well. And it's not everyone in our entire database that gets these. I mean, it's gonna be our top clients that will receive the gifts, but we'll mail them or we'll have them delivered. Um, babies are a big thing and people really appreciate it when you do a baby gift. So, you know, you can go to like Costco and they will have like really cute baby blankets and you just buy them in bulk and have them ready to go and have them delivered out when you see someone has a baby. So um, um, that's, an, that's a really easy way to have a system around that. And then, oh, what was that? Yeah, Costco always has good stuff for when it comes to that. So, and even gift cards where you can buy, you know, you buy five gift cards and you pay $100. And so you save a little bit of money doing that too, because we send out a lot of gift cards. Um, one of the other things we've done really well and uh, is very important to your business is making sure that you have really good business alliances with the vendors that you work with. Um, our vendors are a huge part of, of our team. We consider them part of our team and they really help us out with our client parties. Um, they help us out monetarily. So 
um, you know, having, having the business alliance is really important and you can get really great referrals from your business, from your business vendors. Um, and sometimes there are a lot higher quality referrals than, you know, you might get through a lead or whatnot, higher price points and whatnot. So um, our team, we actually have an app that we put all of our business, um, our vendors in, it's called Dizzle. Um, and so we can send that out to our clients when, right, when we meet them and they use it all the time uh, to find different, you know, if they need a referral for a painter. I mean, we put everybody in, I mean, my hairdresser's in there so you can find anyone that you need in that. And then doing client events. So this is an area where uh, my I did my very first event back in 2008 and I had a huge turnout and I learned right away that that was like, that was the golden ticket for me. Um, it was, I love to do client events because it's a really good way to solidify relationships with people when you're, you know, doing nice events for them and their families. And my favorite part of it is you get to see a lot of people, you know, in one, in one time block versus me trying to go out and individually visit people. Um, it really showcases the success of your brand and who you are as a business. Um, again, even if you're an individual, when you throw a party and you have a hundred people there or 500 people there, it doesn't matter the number and your clients see that there are, that all these people came for you. It, it, I mean, it's, it, it's impressive to them. And so it's a really great way to um, leverage your time and leverage your resources and then it's a good opportunity to meet new people. So when we host our events, we always ask, who do you know that we need to know and bring them to the event? You know, and we're always, um, you know, do you know anybody that's looking to buy in the near future or looking to sell? P please bring them along. We would love to meet them. And we have clients that bring people all the time and we meet them, get their contact info. And, you know, if they're looking to buy, we can at least start working with them or whatever they're uh, they're doing. So it's a good way to meet new clients. Um, it's also a very high quality touch. Um, you get face to face with people. So when I first um, started doing these, I did them once a year. And then, um, then I started doing two a year. And then I've gotten to the point where we do about five parties a year now, because we, we want to be in front of people every quarter. So we start in February is our first event. And then we do our very last event in December and we do um, cookies with Santa. So the nice thing about the parties as well is the planning before the event, it, you get to make a lot of touches to the clients. So we call through our whole database and personally invite them there. They're getting video you know, invitations. They're getting newsletters, inviting them. So they're pretty much hearing from us multiple times throughout the month. Um, and then you know, calling them personally to invite them and getting the RSVPs and then having them come to the party. Um, it's a lot of touches. So if you have any kind of a, I don't know, Keller Williams has a 36 touch plan, you know, those are all touches that you are making when you're doing a party. So if you don't do parties, there are different parties that you can do that are again, very inexpensive. One of the, we're doing cookies with Santa next month. And that one, you know, you pay to rent a Santa. You can, we've done it here in this space right here. Um, you have a backdrop, you get a photographer and you have refreshments. So super inexpensive. And again, if you've got a preferred lender, you've got home warranty company, you've got a home inspector, you can ask them to help um, sponsor different things for the party, like pay for the cookies or, you know, help cover the cost of the, the backdrop for the photos. Um, and vendors are usually really, they, they want to support your business if you're supporting theirs. So we've, I mean, we've had really good luck with that and not had any pushback with any of our vendors. So if you're not doing parties, I recommend highly that you do them. Um, the other marketing thing that we do is direct mail. A lot of people don't actually mail anything to your actual mailbox. And I think that that's the big, huge mistake because we rely on email so much, but email goes to spam. And I don't know if you guys see people's email inboxes on their phones, but when you see like 25,000 emails on somebody's little thing, people don't check their email as much and they unsubscribe and they delete you. So actually sending something to their mailbox every single month. I've done that since the day I got my real estate license. Um, and the things I've mailed out, it's changed over the years. We do, uh, we do postcards. So ours are very personalized. Um, our photos are on them every single month and we always have a little fun message and a call to action. Um, you don't have to do anything that elaborate, but I would definitely do something if you're not doing direct mail. It's really important monthly. 
I send them out monthly. Yep. One thing I want to note, uh, what I want to talk about too, is uh, having, you know, really building up an out-of-state agent network. Um, you know, we're with Keller Williams, so we have the ability to connect with agents everywhere. And I'm sure you guys get the email connections through um, Keller Williams from agents across the country. But I've been part of a coaching company called Buffini and Company. So I've traveled around to events for the last 17 years. Uh, like I go to at least four or five a year. And over those years, I, you know, I collect business cards and I have a, an intention on how many people I want to meet when I get to the event, how many connections am I going to make? How am I going to follow up with the agents after the fact? Um, and it is, and it, especially with the last couple of years with COVID and so many people moving into our state, the, the referrals that you can get from agents when you build that relationship and you can't just collect a card and like throw it in your drawer. You have to have a system around it too. So um, I have a, I have an email. I actually, we have a full uh, marketing system around marketing to out-of-state agents. So my out-of-state agent database is actually bigger than my client database. So it's pretty big, but our team did almost 600,000 in gross commissions last year for out-of-state agent referrals. So if you're going to events, you should be um, capitalizing on that. If you're not going to events, you need to be going to events because that's a really good way to meet people um, and then creating a system around that to get referrals from them. So um, a couple ways that we do newsletters, um, all of our stuff is personalized and customized. So um, like I mentioned, we do a newsletter each month to the out-of-state agents, and it's all about, um, it's a business, it's kind of a business-to-business -business newsletter. So I might send over information on how to throw a great client party, and I'll have my client party checklist in there. So I give them resources, and that goes out every month. And then to our actual client database, we do a newsletter, and we use our marketing pillars to kind of guide the content that goes into the newsletter. We do two newsletters a month. Um, one of them is a called a one subject. So it's literally one subject. So it might be a market update. That one might be a video. For Thanksgiving, we're gonna film a thank you Thanksgiving video and that will be our one subject um, email. So we're hitting our clients' inboxes twice a month and out of state agents once, and then they're getting the direct mail. We're on social. So um, if you're not doing newsletters and doing them consistently, again, I would, I would, add to that. Yes, Terry. These ones are emails. Yeah, these are email newsletters. Um, I would definitely be doing that and doing it consistently. So again, like a lot of the success you're going to have with doing anything marketing is having an actual plan and having a calendar. We just, we're in a reactive business, right? So like, if we don't have that stuff scheduled in our calendar, it's, it's likely not going to go out. So, and I would be careful with what you send out to clients again, because, you know, there's so much, you know, you get stats and stats and stats and they want more than that. Send them, you know, what the top, you know, winter activities that you can do in Salt Lake City with their families or, you know, different places they can go to get pictures with Santa, different things like that. And then social media. So if you're not on social again, you're going to want to be doing some social media um, and I would use it for what it's intended for. Uh, I think you need to be very personal and social. So it needs to be a little mix of like you and who you are in your life. If you have a team, put, get your team in there. You know, you're going to want to have some stats in there. And but you're also going to want to showcase the fact that, you know, you are a real human being. And um, what do I need to do? What's it doing? Oh, there's chat. OK. Um, Jared Hansen asked about, do I send emails through CRM or another platform? We use Constant Contact to send out all of our emails, but you can also use MailChimp. MailChimp's a really good one too. And most of these, MailChimp, I know you can do a free account with them. So depending on how many newsletters you send out a month, um, you don't need to have a paid account. But even if you upgrade to a paid account, it's not that expensive to do it. And it's really easy to use. Um, another, we use uh, Canva to design all of our content that we uh, put together for our social posts and for our newsletters. And again, you can have a free Canva account. It's really easy to use if you're not me. I don't know how to use it, but my marketing gal does. Um, and then they have like a paid account that's $10. So the paid account is still very inexpensive if you want to have a few extra features. So were there any other questions? Did I miss? No. Okay. So social media, make sure you have a social media presence. And again, you need to have a plan with social because that's one of the easiest things to get away from. So 
I recommend that you do a post every other day and that you're doing stories. So 14 posts a month. Um, if you sit down at the beginning of each month and you just say, what do I want to put on social this month? And you spend a couple of hours and you build that out. You can pre-schedule those posts. So they just automatically go out and you don't have to think about it. So, and I would say also don't overthink social because I know a lot of people, they don't post because they think, oh, this is stupid or, oh, it's not perfect. And, oh, I don't know what to say, but you need to be, you need to be on social so people can see you. I know a lot of people that get a lot of business off social. I wouldn't say that we do, but we have a presence. I think ours comes in different um, platforms, but you know, even when you're working with clients, everyone's going to look you up on social media. They just are. So if you're on a listing appointment and you want to say, look at, go onto my social and see how we market our listings and our open houses, they can go on and see that, um, which is, you know, real proof on how you work. So have a social media presence and just really engage with people. Um, it's a great way to also see what's going on in people's lives, just like I said. So if there's any kind of a monumental thing, you can, oh, this isn't working. You can watch for it. Um, and then using video, who here uses video? One person, <laughs> two. <laughs> We all hate video. You love it. Do you do videos or do you do re what do you do? Are you do lives or what do you do? Yeah. Open houses. Yep. Yeah. Video is very important, especially, I mean, I would say. I don't know statistics on this, but I don't know what, if you guys scroll pictures or you watch people's stories, but, um, you know, stories and having videos on there. I mean, you can see the different creative things that people are doing, but it's really important that you incorporate it into your marketing. I use video in the newsletters that I send to out-of-state agents. Um, we try and do one in our one subject emails that we send out. We try and do a video on that one because it's a really good way to just get an email out really quick or a newsletter out party announcements. You can go do business spotlights on different businesses throughout the community. Um, doing holiday videos is really fun. You can get really creative with that. And then client testimonials. One of the things that um, we have done at some of our parties when we've had, if we're not outdoors, um, when we've done, done them indoors is I do a, a dinner party once for our top clients and we will um, have a room set aside. Microphone's being weird. I don't know what it's doing. But we have a room set aside, so we will kind of pick our clients out of the audience and drag them in the back and have somebody back there filming and they do testimonials for us. So if you do a client party, it's a really good way to get a testimonial because they're already there. They love you and they appreciate what you're doing. So I would recommend um, incorporating that and, you know, figuring out how to do that, even if you are outdoors. So just in a quiet place. And you can use your phone for these things. You don't need to have a fancy videographer to do it. And then you just edit them. So use videos and newsletters and then, you know, to provide education. So, you know, when COVID happened, we were all Zooming and doing interviews with people. And I still think that's a really great, like if you want to have a, you know, talk to a mortgage lender, you know, maybe you do a 10 minute with that. So um, using video is important. And then making sure you have a, a plan to get reviews. So do you guys have any, does, how many of you guys have your, ask your clients for reviews? Do you get them? Yeah. Do you, how do you do it? Do you email them? Do you, what do you do? Mm hmm Yep, they are. Do you get business from them? Well, just from reviews, like, do you ever have clients call and say, I Googled you? I Googled uh, the top realtor, not you, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they'll all they always will. 
Well, if you don't have a process for getting reviews from clients, I would create one. Um, you could put together a nice email template at the end of a transaction or even during the transaction. So we'll send it out before we even get to the closing table. People get really busy when they start moving and then they it's easy for them to you know get caught up in a million other things and not write a review. But when you're doing fantastic things for them and they're happy with you, it's a good time to ask for that review. But reviews are really important. I've gotten some of my like my biggest transactions from people literally looking online for the top agents and somehow they, you know, I pop up in the top. Uh, so have a system around reviews. If you have team members, help them get reviews as well. But if you have a transaction coordinator, that could be part of their process. So again, it's going back to, you know, creating a system around it. Um, in our business, because we are in such a reactive business, systems and processes and templates and it, they're more important i cannot stress the importance enough if you again if you have to do send out something more than once make a template out of it so if i an example of that is when i onboard a buyer i get a buyer and that's they're a new client to me i will have my discussion with them over zoom in person on the phone and i have an email template that i send out when i get done that explains i it's, it's basically a a recap of everything we talked about. We talk about the same thing when I'm with every single buyer, right? And you can kind of customize it or tweak it a little bit if you need to, but just being able to have that in place and all I have to do is click send and I don't have to retype, 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 which I know so many people do. So it just saves a lot of time um, when you have it in a template. So, and then if you don't have a website, I would have something, I know Keller Williams provides a website for everyone, correct? Um, there's other websites. If you don't have one, you can go to pro agent website. They're pretty inexpensive. I think that's under a hundred dollars a month, but again, because everything is so, um, online driven, it's important that you've got a presence online. So I think having a website that you can customize a little bit with some of your information, you know, you can feature your listings, um, in our website, we've got, you know, we, we do, we've gotten a of the, um, um, the different cities in around the Valley. So we've put together um, just basically like how the city was founded. So information on the city, what you can do in the different cities. So a lot of that's for relocation. Um, and it's a, you know, you can post blogs on there. So it drives your SEO a little bit, but you know, having a website is also pretty important. Um, and then, like I just mentioned, having a blog. So posting blogs on there does up your SEO. And you can use, uh, you can embed those into your email templates as well. So if you're going to write a blog, use it for multiple reasons. You can also, you know, throw it on social media as well. So a lot of the marketing that you do, um, you can repurpose in different areas of your uh, marketing plan. So you're not having to just, you know, spend a lot of time writing a blog and it only goes one place. So. And then last, I'm going to say be consistent. So um, the one thing that has absolutely benefited and grown my business is the fact that I do all of this and I do it consistently. So if you're in a place where, you know, you're looking to grow your business or you don't feel like you have capacity, um, hire a virtual assistant. There's a lot of good companies out there and it's very inexpensive to do that. And they can do all of this different marketing for you. So but if, you, if you're going to do any marketing at all or you're going to do anything at all, I would say don't start it if you're not going to, if you don't plan on doing it consistently. I can't tell you how many um, agents, I'm on a lot of agents' newsletters lists. And I actually saw one that came out from a company in California today, and it was their October newsletter. And right on top of it was their November newsletter. So, um, and then I haven't, I haven't heard from them for like six months. So, I mean, to me, I look at that and I'm like, they, I got two at once, but I haven't heard from you for all these months and I probably won't hear from them for four more months. So if you're going to do it, do it consistently. And again, follow a calendar. Um, it's so important that you have a plan put in place so that you can do all of these things. And I will tell you, if you do market consistently, you know, we're in a shift right now, but staying in front of your people and being the market expert to them is going to really help you stand out. And you're going to build relationships through times like this. This is the best time to actually deepen the relationships with your clients when people are in fear and you can be their trusted advisor. And then they see you constantly over and over again, just shows how you show up as a person and as an agent. Um, you know, cause if you're going to have a system, if you, I mean, working by referral and which is what I do, you know, I always tell my agents, 
you can either work by word of mouth or work by referral. And the difference between that is like, we can't just depend on people to give out our name. It happens and they do it. But having a system around referrals, that is working by referral, not by word of mouth. So um, another important thing is just asking your clients for referrals. It's a lot of people don't like doing it. They feel very uncomfortable doing it. And I have no problem asking for a referral. Um, we, we need to be doing that. It's, hey, did I do a great job for you? If you feel like I did a really great job for you, I would love it if you would you know think about me the next time you hear of somebody buying and selling a home. And if you do you know, meet someone who's looking or somebody, your friends or family or colleagues, please reach out to me with their contact information and I will make a friendly introduction. And my clients know I'm just going to reach out. And again, I'm, you know, we're not, it's different, you know, reaching out and not being salesy is one thing when you just say, Hey, I hear you're looking, I want to be, I want to, you know, chat with you and see what questions I can answer for you and see if I can guide you in the right direction. If you teach that to your clients, you will get the referrals, but you got to ask like over and over and over again, constantly be asking. So if you don't do it, do it. So mm. anyways, all right. I went through that fast. So does anybody have questions? I do. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to talk slow. It's one thing that I don't do, but everyone has, they can get back to work. Yes. We, I think we have about our what? About 1500, I believe is in our clients. So I do things a little bit differently with database. We have um, our, so I use follow-up boss for our lead management. And then once we convert them into a relationship, so we're working with them, it's called follow-up boss. It's a really awesome platform to basically do all lead management. So um, especially if you have teams and you need to keep track of what, who's assigned to what and what everyone is doing. And if you're individual, it's awesome because, I mean, it will tell you exactly what you need to do every single day. And then you can really track your leads in there. So we won't move them from follow-up boss into my actual CRM until they're like a relationship. Because I, my CRM is, they're my relationships. And I don't want to clutter it with 20,000 people that might have come through Zillow or wherever they came from. So yeah. Yep. And then. I have agents in there as well. So I guess 1800 ish, 1500 ish. So, and again, always growing, you know, the importance of having a really solid database and having a place to put it. Do you guys all have CRMs somewhere you store your contact info for your clients? Yeah. I actually use one called referral maker and it's through a coaching. I'm with Buffini and company coaching. You all ever heard of them? And they provide a CRM. It's not my favorite and not the best, but it serves its purpose for what we need it for because we do have follow-up boss. So uh, so that's where we really use, we use that to, you know, cultivate the lead and get them over into the database. Yes. Um, pretty much everything is very automated. It's all automated. It has to be automated just in the sense of saving time. So you know, again, that goes back, like we literally have a template for everything that we do. We have a, we have, our systems are crazy for everything. Everyone knows exactly who their roles are. So like for me, if I get a referral that comes through, I, I take the information, say I got an out-of-state referral from an agent in Texas. So I take the, I get it from the agent. I have a marketing assistant. I send it to her. She writes a note to the agent in Texas with a thank you note or a, a little like a gift card. And then she adds that agent into our system. And then the buyer or the seller goes into our follow-up boss. And then we have a system to follow up with the agent and let them know where we're at with the client. So it's all very automated. Otherwise, I would never remember to do all the things I need to do. Yes. Yeah. So I have, well, I have two admin right now. Um, I have a transaction manager. So Cassie on my team has been in, she's been at Keller Williams a long time, longer than me. Uh, she does all our transaction management. And then I have a full-time marketing coordinator who does all the marketing. So she does like the parties, all the gifts, the newsletters, social media, um, all these things, all the things I throw at her every day. She probably gets more thrown at her than anyone on my team because we're always doing different things. But so I have the two and then I have my sales agents. So 
they, my agents can do listings and work with buyers. So, and then the, everything that, when I say we, I, this, that we do, it's, we do this all for the whole entire team. So uh, like our newsletters are, they're not Heather Roxburgh's newsletters. It's the Roxburgh group. It's our whole team. And, you know, I don't want, I don't necessarily want to be the face of our business. I want us all to be, cause we're a team. We're all one. Um, so, you know, all of our marketing that goes out is team focused, not me focused. Um, and I really help my agents. I mean, my, my thing with them is I want to help them build a really great business, a referral based business as well. Um, I will say that it's a lot, you know, you can work transactionally, you can chase leads or you can work by referral and you can build a sustainable, long lasting business where people come back and back and back. So if you take really good care of them and again, it's staying in front of people like my, you, if you are my client, like you can't. I mean, you're getting, you're going to get this every month from me. You couldn't forget me even if you wanted to, it's not even possible. Like you could unsubscribe. I'm still going to hit your mailbox. You can, I mean, I'm going to be in your social feed. I'm going to, I will find you. So I know it is scary. You have a question. Yeah. You can ask me anything. buddy no no we typically plan our postcard photos out like i mean we have the entire year planned for next year right now um and so we will get together and we'll do like six photo shoots at one time and again you can use your phone to do those you don't doesn't have to you know i think a lot of people get hung up on i got to have a photographer and i have to have a videographer like that doesn't matter you just need to do it that's the biggest thing um, we, we will bring a photographer in if we're going to do like six months at a time, because it's just so much easier and the pictures turn out a little bit better. Um, but you know, I have team members that will, I might hire somebody that comes on the team and we got to take them and put them up against a white wall and get their photo so they can get on the postcard as well. So, um, so we try and do at least three, three at once. So we just say, this little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. I can't tell. I think he muted himself. <laughs> the hard thing about the postcards right now is like we try and base them around what's happening in the market <laughs> because the market is like such a roller coaster. That was our October card was a roller coaster. Um, we're kind of careful with how many we're going to do at once. So we have them planned, but they could, they're subject to change if the market shifts on us and and even ships back in a better direction, which we all hope that happens next year, right? But we'll see what happens with interest rates. Yes. What do we put on there? Did you see them? Did you come in late? I'll click back and show you really quick. Of the postcards, I do one. Yeah, that's what they look like right there. So those are some examples. So the one on that says uh, the one on the map, that one I sent out to clients and I send them all to clients and agents, but we change the message if it's an agent versus a client. So we're telling our clients we're connected coast to coast. So if you are, you know, anybody moving out of state, we can get you a great agent. And then to agents where your Utah experts, you know, so um, and then like, we're on the lookout that one said on the back, the call to action was for your connections and introductions. And then we talk about, you know, getting referrals and kind of same thing with the shower us with love that was in February. So we kind of theme it around like in March next year, we'll do like something about, you know, uh, like the pot of gold, like we'll do with a rainbow and money. I don't know what it will be. We have a design, but um, so we, we try, I think putting your face on things is super important. Cause again, it's your clients are seeing your face over and over and over again. So, um, you know, making sure that you're putting your beautiful face on your marketing, make your marketing work for you. Um, and postcards is a great way to do it. They're fun too. People like them. So, yeah. So do you have any other questions, Terry? I have one person. You don't need 10. Um, I have a graphic designer 
but we, so really what we do with her is we will say, this is what we want it to be. And then we will tell her, we'll Google things and say, we want it to kind of look like this and then she'll design it. And then we'll say, okay, we like, or tweak. Usually she hits it really quick. She's been doing these for us for years. Um, and so we give her the guidance, but it takes her probably maybe 30 minutes to an hour to design the postcard each month. And then we just do the photos. So, um, one person can do all these things though. It's possible because I have one person that does them all. I have a full-time person, but I, but we do a lot with, I mean, just the five parties a year, you, one party ends and the next party begins like immediately. So we just did a pumpkin patch. And as soon as we finished that up, we were, I mean, we were already on to Santa. So Santa was already in motion. Like we book our venues a year, a year in advance if we need to, um, places book up a lot now. So you kind of have to be way ahead of the game on what you're going to do. Um, you know, with the parties, you got to be very organized with them, have good checklists. I'm happy to share everything we have. I mean, I've done them for since 2008 and I've, I've done a lot of parties, so I know what not to do. I know what to do. I know what we've forgotten over the years. I mean, our party checklist is probably literally five pages of full check off, check off, check off. I mean, in every party, it's littlest things that you wouldn't even think about. Like, did we bring napkins for the donuts? It's things like that that you forget. So, um, so, but there, it's not difficult once you do it once and then you make kind of a manual around it. So again, that goes back to, everything you do more than once, you need a system and you need to have it documented. Like we have a budget for everything. So if we're doing our pumpkin patch event, I can go back last year. I can tell you how many people showed up because we check people in. Um, I can tell you how much our event costs, how many pumpkins we ordered, every single thing that we did, which magician we used. So we just book the same people, book the same thing. So, um, and you don't need to change up your parties. You know, you can do the same thing. They've gained traction that way. My pumpkin patch. I've had up to 1300 people come to that. So it's a very well attended event. Like they're huge. So I do, I do small parties and big parties. So some of the parties are for the whole database. Some of them are for just a pluses and a's. Um, cause if I have a thousand people at a pumpkin patch, I usually, I have to look at the list to see who actually came because I can only see so many people when they come to the event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because they are parties are a lot of work. If you're doing them all by yourself, depending on how many people you have come. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even if you plan, so I just barely did a, like two days ago, a whole presentation on client parties and exactly what to do to plan them. I can come back sometime and do that if you want. But um, get like, again, go to your vendors and say the day of the event, I need you at the check-in table. I need you taking the candid photos. I need you doing this, you doing this. I need you giving out the donuts, whatever the, whatever you do at your event, um, you know, get, get, you know, see who, you know, like in your friends, like when I first started doing events, we did everything. My, I mean, we did a summer barbecue every year and my dad was like flipping the burgers <laughs> and my family was actually like working the event. Because I was, I mean, that was way back in the beginning. I didn't have a big team. I didn't even have a team when I first started doing, I'm, I was by myself. So, um, so I, I don't think you have to make them that complicated. Again, if you start really like three or four months in advance and you start planning and you know exactly what you're going to do and you can put it together, it's not that much, it's not, it's not going to be that much work on you, but if you are doing it like six weeks in advance, you're going to be hustling and then you're going to lose your mind, especially if you're busy with business. So, but I can help you with like checklists and stuff like that. We have all those things. Yeah. So any more questions? I hate this microphone, by the way. <laughs> yes.
They are so easy because I do a water park at Cowabunga Bay and all we do is show up. It's awesome. My team loves that when they're like, yay, we're not like we did pumpkins in the park and we have to like haul in a thousand pumpkins. And so that was fun times. Uh, but Kuahara, I've done, I did one there in 2020 and that is so easy to show up. Yeah. Forgot the napkins we did this year too. <laughs> That's why I remember because I'm like, we forgot napkins this year. We had to run to the store and get them. Add that to the checklist. <laughs> Those are two really good ones. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Yes. Um, that one says for your connections and referrals. So, um, and then we have a whole big thing about like, we're, we make them pretty witty too. So um, it's like, you know, who do you know that we need to know? Who can you connect us with? Like, we're always, we love your referrals kind of a card. So that's what's on the back of that one. So, and then I, if you don't want to do any of this yourself, I actually have a marketing company that I do all of these things for you, except for client parties. Um, but if you, Robin, this might be for you. <laughs> you should talk to me about it. If, um, it's my marketing company that I have a partner with um, and I can get you information on it. So if anyone's interested, um, let me know. We do um, all the social media posts every month. We do the, the newsletters, we do the blog, we write video scripts, we do the video thumbnails. Um, what am I missing? What am I missing? I think I might have it in here at the very end of the backpack. Let me just go back here, tell you what. Oh, I took it out. It's not in there. Um, so, oh yeah, the postcard. Yeah, that's so it's, um, it's your newsletter every month. It's your blog. It's 14 social media posts. It's the postcard that is personalized. So you can do photos or you can do a stock photo. I always say photo of your face. Um, it is the, did I say blog? Um, what did I say? Remind me what I just said. Video, vi the video script, the video thumbnails, the social media posts, the postcards, the email. Um, we do a monthly strategy call. So like I just did one on how to throw a client party. So it was an hour of everything. And then we provide the resources for that. So you get a million party client ideas, our entire checklist, um, when to throw the party, how to throw them. When, I mean, it breaks it down as far as like, you're going to send out your save the date exactly five weeks before your mail. And, you know, it'll tell you exactly when to send out the marketing, when to start making phone calls, how to get our SVPs and how to get a lot of people to your party. Cause that's the whole thing. If you're going to throw it, you want to get a lot of people there. So um, I can give you more information on that. If you are interested in, in doing it, it's completely on the side. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, it's monthly. Yeah, and the only so it's a monthly fee. It's four ninety nine a month, and then um, you have to you know you have to mail out your postcards. We use Vistaprint for that, which is actually pretty inexpensive to send them out, depending on how many are in your database. But um, everything's like personalized, so we do it all in Canva. So um, we teach. So all of the members we do a um, we do an initial call with them and teach them how to go into Canva and add their own colors and their own branding and their logo and everything in there. Um, but everything it's just for real estate agents. So it's basically essentially like the marketing that I send out that I just, we just do it for, we, we have a company. So my partner is a marketing consultant and she's been doing marketing for about 10, 12 years. She used to work for Buffini and company and do all their digital marketing. She's got a degree in marketing and she's a consultant. So like to have someone like her, like if you wanted to find someone, Robin, and that could do it, I mean, she's like three to $5,000 a month just to do your marketing. So she's incredible. Um, she does a really great job. So we do it together. So we've been working together for a long time. So if anybody's interested, let me know. But 
if you don't have a marketing plan, I would really recommend sitting down and spending some time before the year ends to put something together. Um, again, I, you would be very surprised by how just the referrals that you're going to mine out of that, just by staying in touch with your clients and being really intentional on the message you're sending to them, what you're asking for and asking for referrals and just being in front of people. Cause it is like, it's so easy. Think about if you don't see somebody on social or you don't hear from a friend for a while, like they just kind of leave your mind. It's sad, but that's the way the world goes right now. And we're just the realtors, right? So if you're not standing out and, and doing some additional extras, they'll forget about you. They just will. They'll forget your name. There's a lot of, you ask a lot of people who was your realtor. Oh, I don't know. I think her name was maybe Holly, <laughs> you know, so they don't know how to contact you. Um, don't ever be that realtor. So have a marketing plan so that you're not. Any more questions? I think there's none up here. So, all right. You guys got out early. Thanks, Terry.